This is the most researched question by PR practitioners in Kenya. What exactly is PR? My name is Eunice Victoria and today we are going to unpack the definition of PR and how far we've gone. To help us unpack this topic, our team went online to ask five PR gurus what exactly is PR. Caroline said, for me PR is about relationships. Franklin Wambugu said, um, thanks for the good work. I will first of all say that PR, as we all know, has changed over the last couple of years uh, because of technological advancements and because of how society is becoming so sophisticated. And he also added that PR, as we knew it in our college days and earlier on our careers, was about how and what was organization engaging with the internal and external uh, publics. He also added that, but with technology and emerging issues around sustainability and climate change, organizations, organizations are now aligning themselves with these emerging issues. We also got someone, her name is Frida Talam. Frida said, I always define PR as a bridge, that is public relations practitioners act as engagement points okay we also had one from ruth dero so ruth uh, said um amazing amazing stuff thank you ruth pr discourse and revolution is an unending story that can only be said by smart minds like eunice victoria thank you <laughs> thank you very much ruth uh we also ask paul paul said uh, the pr practice of managing communication and relationship between an organization and various stakeholders, including customers, employees, investors, and so on. The goal of PR is to promote a positive image of the organization and to maintain its reputation. So those are the five key PR practitioners that we talked to. To help us unpack this topic today, today we have Dr. John Olwoch. Dr. John Olwoch has over 23 years experience teaching and mentoring practitioners of public relations in Kenya and around the world. So Dr. Lodge, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, to start us off, I was interested in your career path. I mean, 23 years experience is not... Um, Kidogo timer. Okay. So tell me about you, yourself, your career path. Thank you, Eunice. Um, well, uh, like you have said, I've been at the space of uh, public relations and corporate communications and media practice for the last uh, 23 years. I started off as a public relations officer uh, for a public university, went on to become a lecturer and uh, a senior lecturer and dean of faculty and uh, other things. So really what I've done with my life all those years is to teach uh, public relations, to publish a lot on public relations topics, to mentor students at uh, postgraduate PhD master's level and uh, to continue to contribute to the growth and development of the profession in all ways, through practice and scholarship. Yeah, I'm so happy that you said you started off as a um, public relations um, executive. Yes. So I want to know, how was, what were your duties then? What were you doing as a PR executive then? Um, my main uh, responsibility was to be in charge of the relationship between the university where I was working and its various publics, both internal and external. So mostly I was in charge of uh, communication and communication strategy. I was in charge of publications, publicity, media relations, marketing, and all that. Those days we didn't have social media. Oh. Yeah, so that is what I was doing uh, briefly in that uh, capacity. Okay, and um, with that, uh, whatever, I mean, <laughs> with these uh, duties that you've explained to us, do you think you were practicing PR? Not that I think, I know I was, mm -hmm. because PR is about creating and maintaining the liberate relationships that are mutually beneficial between an organization and its publics. Mm -hmm. So that is precisely what uh, 
I was doing, among other things. Exactly. Yeah. So um, after you left um, your work, I mean, you were promoted. You were <laughs> I I wasn't promoted as such, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I I was in practice. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I wanted to change uh, my movement and make it to scholarship mm -hmm. to teach in the university. Mm -hmm. So I just packed uh, practice and uh, moved to teaching. Mm -hmm. But the most beautiful thing about teaching is that I still, you know, continued uh, outside teaching to mm -hmm. practice and to consult. Mm -hmm. Yes. So with this year's experience, 23 years experience, you say, mm -hmm. so what is public relations? Public relations is um, what it was then. Uh, it hasn't changed. It is still, at that time, like I'd said, mm -hmm. it was about uh, creation and maintenance of uh, strategic relationships that are mutually beneficial to the organization and its publics. Th that was the whole principle of uh, public relations. Mm -hmm. And that, in my view, hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. A lot of things have happened in the landscape, but uh, the, the core mandate, the core responsibility of public relations, touching on its uh, very you know, definition, hasn't changed. I don't even think it needs to change. So th there's something Dr. Ria have realized about uh, PR practice in Kenya. In many, many organizations, corporate organizations, NGOs and so on, we find out that people feel like PR is about media relations. What do you think about that? You know, we are not really engaging other stakeholders. We just feel like media, press release, how do we create a relationship with media? PR is not about media relations. That would be so offensive to the profession. Oh. But uh, media relations is an aspect of PR practice. And in that, there are so many others. There is uh, media relations, there is crisis management, there is uh, strategic communication, there is, you know, nowadays people are talking about social media and, and so on. So those are just elements of practice, but we cannot uh, squeeze PR, which is a profession, to just one branch or one element of practice. So those who are doing media relations in some way, are engaging in a strategy, in a PR strategy, to achieve, of course, a desired means or a, a desired end, because different strategies are deployed to react to different situations. And media relations is a key uh, strategy in the discharge of public relations. But we cannot say that public relations is, is media relations, no. Yes. Yeah, in that case, could you take me through maybe, um, I don't know if you can do this, a, a JD, for a PR practitioner in a corporate organization. What should you look at, especially for your practitioners right now or young, practi young practitioners entering the industry? Mm. How does a JD for a PR practitioner look like? You know, a JD is fashioned by the organization. Mm -hmm. And the organization would fashion its JDs based on its bottom line because organizations don't exist to practice PR. Organizations exist to attain their desired bottom line. Mm -hmm. So depending on what the organization was established to undertake, they would create or establish offices, PR office or communications office or whatever office that would be in charge of those uh, responsibilities to help them undertake those responsibilities. So PR would, one of, would be one of them. And again, today, uh, a lot of people, a lot of organizations have made a lot of innovations in even staffing of public relations uh, offices. Uh, some combine it with uh, publicity, others combine it with marketing, others combine it with HR, others combine it with advertising and so on. So it would not be fair to say that this is the, 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 the standard uh, template or standard JD for PR uh, practitioners. Mm -hmm. It would invariably be dependent on the organization's bottom line and the amount of, 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 of staffing they have and the, 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 the specializations or the kind of knowledge base that they're looking for. But invariably, if we were to talk generally, if we go back to the, 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 the basis or the foundation of public relations, 
just as the name suggests. I don't even know why people struggle to, to define what it is. Just as the name suggests, mm -hmm. public relations is about relationships between the organization and its publics. Mm -hmm. So all the other supportive um, strategies or supportive functions that we are going to engage in to help maintain, to first you have to establish it, you create, and you maintain. Mm -hmm. And when you look at those uh, three terms critically, there is something deliberate. You have to be deliberate. Mm -hmm. You have to sustain what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, any JD that has those key uh, functions mm -hmm. about first establishing those relationships, creating those relationships, feeding them in a way that uh, they are beneficial mutually to the organization, the organization and the, the, the publics, and having a deliberate way of maintaining them through and through. Uh, you would find those JDs, you know, uh, snippets of those JDs in those functions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if it is something to do with marketing, if it is a media house, if it is a hospitality industry, if it is a transport industry, if it's an educational industry and so on, mm -hmm. those add-ons can now come. Uh, you know, elements of advertising, elements of publicity, elements of marketing, elements of HR, elements of corporate social responsibility, you know, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But primarily, uh, PR is just about creating and maintaining this mutually fulfilling and rewarding relationships between the organization and its uh, people. Exactly. Thank so you. I think the place whereby we usually confuse is your first day as a PR practitioner in an organization. No? Yes. So what do you do now that I have PR? It's creating and maintaining a relationship between an organization, uh, for instance, Skills to Grow Africa and yes. the public. Yes. So what's the first thing I need to do when I take over as a PR practitioner for Skills to Grow? Should I map out the audience or the public first? Or? No, the first thing that you need to do is develop a PR strategy. If there is a corporate communications policy for the organization, then you are going to distill that, that policy to develop a PR strategy. And when you're developing this strategy, you look at your publics, you look at, uh, you know, like, a, uh, like an analysis, like, you know, you analyze yourself, you analyze your organization, your stakeholders, internal, external, the natures or nature of engagements that you want to have with them and that will now help you to know what to do what when uh, what to do at what time mm -hmm. so that you remain faithful to the strategy so number one is the, we have the organization at the macro level we have the organization mm -hmm. this organization has its um, mandate the the core values the mission the vision the you know all of that mm -hmm. And then the organization has a strategic plan. And in this strategic plan, there are various, you know, you derive the work plans. Each and every each and every department within the organization will now start mapping out their work plans and what they need to do. Mm -hmm. So it is all the way from the mandate, the vision, the mission, the core values, the strategic plan, then the work plans, and then all broken down and up to activities. Mm -hmm. So that when you go to the office, uh, day one, you know what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. as a public relations person mm -hmm. because you cannot be sitting waiting or being reactive. You know, mm -hmm. some people say reactive PR, mm -hmm. which is, you know, just defending. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you distill the functions like that using those uh, levels, mm -hmm. then it, 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 you don't have to ask or you don't even have to be creative about anything because everything that you're supposed to be doing where and when is clear. Mm -hmm. Yes. Also, I have a question. Why do you think media relations is what most organizations focus a lot more? Um, I think um, that's debatable, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think uh, because of the understanding, mm -hmm. a lot of people think that, um, you know, if you are all there in the media and you are, you know, showing your face, everything, mm -hmm. then people will know that you exist or people, people will think that that is public relations. Mm -hmm. But um, there are very many organizations that 
do not use the media, or if at all they do, very extremely sparingly, because media relations is not part of their PR strategy. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example of, say, Mercedes. When did you see them last uh, use the media to talk about their products? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they know where to get their clients and they know how to communicate with them. So media relations is not a strategy, it's not a communication strategy in the Mercedes uh, yeah, or DT Dobby, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just that, that uh, lack of uh, clear understanding mm -hmm. and confusing. Because, you know, there is now, some, sometimes the, the line is not very clear. Uh, you know, journalism and public relations and everybody is trying to fight for that space. And, you know, so there's just, you know, sometimes the, the, the lines are not very clearly drawn. Mm -hmm. But um, for those who tend to over, over, overuse or, or, or those who tend to favor media relations, perhaps if you were to look at their... Their, their, their core values or their responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Maybe they want to occupy that space where you know everyone else is so they think they'll meet their clients in the media. Mm -hmm. But then there are very many other organizations that uh, I'm sure you have not uh, seen uh, do media relations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, NSIS, National Intelligence Security, mm -hmm. they have a communications department, they have PR department, but have you seen them in the media? Yeah, mm -hmm. so really, it mm -hmm. just depends on the bottom line. Yes. Yeah. So, um, something else about um, media. Yeah. Mm. We've said that really media relations is not public relations, and we've explained what public relations is. Mm. So, what I want to understand is in PR, we've seen new, um, can I call it, types of PR coming in, like sustainability communication, we have health communication, yes. and so on. Yes. So, um, if I want to practice sustainability communication, for instance, mm. where would I start from? And also, how? Why is it? Is it something that was there before, or is it a new, you know, thing coming in? No, it is not new. A sustainability communication came from uh, corporate CSR, corporate social responsibility. Mm -hmm. Then we practiced it. We practiced it like that, and then we moved to corporate social investment. Mm -hmm. And then we have gone like that. Now we are talking about sustainability, uh, sustainability communication. So it's it's not new. The principles are not new anyway. Mm -hmm. They've been with us, mm -hmm. but because of the change in technology, change in um, in practice, change in awareness, mm -hmm. the market dynamics, what I may call the, the change in operating environment, mm -hmm. a lot of innovations keep coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the basic principles that underline the practice and the philosophy of all this basically has remained the same. Mm -hmm. So you see now people are talking about sustainability, uh, green energy, mm -hmm. you know, cost cutting and so on. So it's a whole new dimension of having to look at how you want to sustain your operations mm -hmm. in a very extremely competitive environment, com competitive market, mm -hmm. nationally, uh, even globally. So you really, organizations really have to think about sustainability and sustainability communication comes in. Mm -hmm. Yes. Also, um, something I've realized, especially right now, mm. with uh, social media coming in, Yes. we have now uh, organizations using influencers yes. on um, social media to bring their message into their target audience. Mm -hmm. What do you think about influencer communication? Um, the influencers uh, are coming in to fill some gap. Mm. And uh, the influencers are riding on the backdrop of publicity, marketing, and advertisement. If you have seen uh, today, if, uh, you know, for, for very little money and within a very short time in terms of impact, what we used to call in advertising um, uh, value, what was it? It was called advertising value equivalence. Mm. Yeah, so the impact now, you know, advertising can be extremely expensive, Same, especially yeah. in the mainstream media mm. uh, where, but today, because of that, you know, cost cutting and innovation and technology, mm -hmm. uh, organizations and PR people, communications people decided to take a corner and uh, engage with uh, influencers and, and so on to, to fill that gap and to make it more sustainable and also more affordable. Mm -hmm. 
because you know globally you know the economies have not been very uh, very very well yeah. yeah job cuts and then the dollar issues mm -hmm. and then the high cost of uh, doing business mm -hmm. yeah rental spaces you know and then competition mm -hmm. too many people are offering the same uh, product in the market so you have to be creative and innovative mm -hmm. so that you at least uh, defray certain costs mm -hmm. where it will take you a million today mm -hmm. To, 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 to put up a full page advert in the newspaper uh, with the technology and, 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 uh, and social media, it would, you would spend 3,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people would have uh, seen mm -hmm. that communication. Yeah. That is where influencers come in mm -hmm. because they have followers. They have followers for good reasons or bad reasons, mm -hmm. but the fact is they have followers, yeah. a million of them, mm -hmm. uh, 500,000 of them. Mm -hmm. Now, what do businesses want? What does, say, the ministry want if the communication is about a child immunization program? Mm. So what do they want? They want the, the message or mm. the information about upcoming child immunization to reach everybody within a very short time. Mm. So we will take it to the mainstream newspapers. Nobody reads them. And again, it is very expensive to put that advert. You will take it to the mainstream media houses, extremely expensive. What do you do? Uh, look for influencers, push the message. They will, within no minute, they will push it down to the ground. And of course, you know, politics and politicians and campaigning and ele electioneering also. Mm -hmm. The issue of influencers actually started uh, when uh, President Obama was uh, campaigning. That was the first time in the history of, um, of uh, social media where we saw, you know, social media coming up or, or institutions and organizations using uh, leveraging on social media greatly to do publicity to do marketing and to push their messages down to the consumers down to the grassroots mm -hmm. yes yeah something about the government i realized government are now using journalists you know to become their you know uh, communication managers or director of communications what do you think about this what that i mean what does it take to be a pr practitioner do I need a degree and so on? <laughs> um, not, not so much government, uh, but because government is a public service commission and government employees, that's yeah. how they are recruited. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think you would say politicians, politicians. or uh, you know, you know, people in that uh, space. Yeah. Um, your question is, what does it take to be a public relations practitioner? Yes. What does it take to be a doctor? What does it take to be a lawyer? Training. What does it take to be an engineer? Mm -hmm. It takes training, mm -hmm. examination, qualification, and admission of an individual mm -hmm. to, be, to, be, to be a public relations practitioner. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be a public relations practitioner, you have to study mm -hmm. uh, the profession. It takes four years, mm -hmm. you know, basic, uh, undergraduate, it takes four years. Mm -hmm. And then you have to be recognized. Of course, by the time you graduate, you know, they tell, they, 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 they use these words when you're graduating that uh, I give you power to read and to do all that pertains to this degree. Yeah. It means you have been officially indoctrinated mm. into the practice of that degree. Yeah. So that degree was communication, was public relations, whatever. Mm -hmm. That is what it takes to be a professional. Mm. And then all professional bodies, so professional organizations have, um, you know, like, like uh, groupings. Mm. So we have Public Relations Society of Kenya. You have been trained, examined, qualified, released, graduated to practice uh, PR. Mm. Then you move to the profession, the professional body in your country. Mm. You register with them. They, they, they are now, they, they know you, they get to know you. Yeah. You become a member. Mm. And you know, in membership, there are also several other things like, you know, short courses, uh, reorientation, conferences, and so on. Mm. And then practice. Mm. So constant practice, mentorship, growing up into the industry, growing up into the field, mm. makes one a practitioner, mm. of course, out of experience. Mm. Yes, so that is what it means. And that is what it takes to be a public relations uh, practitioner or uh, public relations professional. I am yet to, in all the years I've taught in the university, I'm yet to, 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 to discover any other route through which somebody can become a PR professional other yeah. than going to school to study it. Yeah. 
Now, you asked the, the other question about, uh, about people hiring journalists as communications officers. Yeah. And again, that is also systemic. If you look at uh, even the, the, because, you know, public relations is a new profession, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially in Kenya. When I say new, I mean it is less than 30 years old. Mm -hmm. It is um, the likes of Deista mm -hmm. University that started, you know, this undergraduate training in, uh, in, in communication. Then we followed a more university. I think in the first a lot of students we, we admitted at Moi University, I was teaching there uh, sometime, I think was in the year 2006 or thereabout. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, other universities and colleges started picking up and so on. Otherwise, before the distinction, pub, uh, the distinction was uh, not so clear mm -hmm. because public relations or communication or journalism was thought of as a secondary qualification. Mm. So people who had uh, training in humanities and social sciences would go to the University of Nairobi, a school of journalism, and then have some postgraduate diploma in, in, in journalism. Mm. Some of them, because there was generally absence of trained professionals in that area, there were Zungus who started the PR, were again, you know, either retiring or relocating to other places or going back to their country. So there was a void and uh, now uh, government and uh, organizations started recruiting you know professionals to fill that void that was being left by the guys who are retiring or or, or relocating to other countries <clears throat> so in the adverts for jobs those years you'd say you'd you'd see something like training in media stroke journalism will be an added advantage, advantage yeah. if you get yeah. so that is where the confusion started mm -hmm. I'm happy that it has been sorted now. Our government and uh, employers and organizations are now very clear. They don't say training in this or this will be an added advantage. They're looking for a communications officer. You've got to have a training in communication. Yeah, so uh, they, they went into that space. So journalists moved to, to communication. They moved to PR because the profession was not so solid in terms of uh, personnel and professionals. So they moved in, reoriented themselves, and started, you know, uh, masquerading in quotes as uh, PR people. But then uh, today, those are the people who are known because they have occupied that space for a long time. Mm -hmm. So if a politician is running, or if somebody, a politician, is uh, appointed to an office, they would say, "Hey, uh, I want Eunice Victoria to be my communications advisor because." They've seen Eunice Victoria as a, a TV announcer or as a radio journalist or as a newscaster mm -hmm. all the, all, you know, for five years, six years, ten years. So they think that because you are reading news or you are, you know, writing, you know, in the newspapers, you are a journalist, then you'd, uh, you'd be, you are a communications person. Mm -hmm. So that's why they very quickly, you know. Uh, get to that level. Mm -hmm. I think it is something that uh, with time, again, we will need to bring out so that uh, they get to know that they're training in communication and there are people who are trained in communication, they are professionals, and they're not necessarily journalists. So but I need to be clear. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they are generally, there, there are some programs that um, have both. Yes, I have written curricula for, for, for several universities in, in, this, in Kenya. And uh, uh, we, we, there are some that are Puritan, uh, communication and PR from first year to fourth year. Mm -hmm. Then you graduate as such. Mm -hmm. There are some that are mixed, mm -hmm. uh, like a hybrid. So you are admitted, say, Bachelor of Science, Communication and Media Studies. Mm -hmm. Then first year, second year, they, they learn the same things, all of them. Then as you're moving to third year, now you choose your area of specialization. Mm -hmm. So some would specialize in journalism and media studies. Others would specialize in communication and public relations, mm -hmm. which is a good thing because, you know, sometimes the, 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 the functions override uh, each other. Mm -hmm. But then again, you prepare the graduates to get to be, to be amenable to the situation that lends itself fast. Mm -hmm. So if uh, the opportunities in the media sector they will be trained because they carry all these courses from first year, second year, and even when they specialize, they still uh, load 
even if you specialize in journalism, mm -hmm. but you still load some PR courses or communications mm -hmm. courses along the way. Mm -hmm. If you're specializing in journalism, you I mean, in, in PR, you still load some co uh, communication courses along the way. Mm -hmm. So when eventually you graduate, you have a functional uh, mind, a functional capacity mm -hmm. to discharge either in uh, journalism, no, let me not say journalism, let me say media studies or media mm -hmm. field, or in uh, public uh, or communications field or even in the uh, printing, publishing, book trade field. Yeah. yeah, so it's about how the training is done and the interest and passion of the individuals. Okay. Yes. So just the second last question. Some people have claimed that the PR curriculum is up outdated. So that's why we are having half-baked PR practitioners. And that's why now we have to take people from other you know, yeah. journalists yeah. and so on to come and practice. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you say about that? That the PR curriculum is outdated? Yeah, in many uh, institutions. Oh, see, yeah, that would be, as a scholar, that yeah. would take, that would have to take me research mm -hmm. and analysis and comparative, you know, mm -hmm. uh, study to come up with such a conclusion. Mm -hmm. But uh, curriculum is uh, a living document. Mm -hmm. And all curricula are supposed to be reviewed at the end of their cycle. Uh, what that means is, if a curriculum is four years, mm -hmm. then at the end of the cycle, that means when the students who are admitted into first year get to fourth year and graduate, that curriculum is, d is due for review. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of changes take place in the environment, mm -hmm. globally, locally, and so on. So I think institutions, that offer training should be alive mm. and should be active yeah. in a, a constant curriculum review mm -hmm. so that at every given time, the products that you churn out, the graduates that you, produce, you, you take out to the field are uh, alert yeah. to the uh, operating you know, uh, issues in the environment. They are alert to the changes that are happening, taking place in the market and in the industry. So there are also other players that need to come on board yeah, the PRSK, a yeah. Media Council of Kenya, mm -hmm. even government, mm -hmm. yeah, that need to come on board. Commission for University Education, and so many other the the, the organizations, the 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 the, the, the industry the itself, mm -hmm. the organizations that have public relations, uh, whatever the consultants, yeah. yeah, professionals, practitioners, yeah, it all takes all of those to uh, develop a curriculum that is alive mm -hmm. to the needs of the market as per that time. Right. Otherwise, if we just teach and graduate without you know, having to review constantly that curriculum, then you will say it is outdated. Yeah. Yes. And then the final question, what are the top five skills that a PR practitioner must master? <laughs> top five skills. <laughs> Number one is um, expertise in communication. A PR person, a PR professional must be an excellent communicator. Then writing. Then uh, critical thinking. You know, because a lot of scenarios come in the course of uh, practice or in the course of work that require you to be able to think on your feet. So you must be a critical thinker. The other thing is uh, creativity and innovation. You have to be someone who is creative, somebody who is innovative, uh, so that you know you can weigh situations and think through what needs to be done mm -hmm. when there is time to do it. Yeah. yeah, I think to me those would be the key competencies or the top skills that anybody who is thinking of a career in public relations need to have, or anybody who is in public relations already need to sharpen those skills so that they are more useful and they are more um, competitive in yeah. the field because okay. you know the field is also changing progressively yeah and only the best are going to survive yeah yes thank you so much for coming i'm thank very you. happy to have you today <laughs> thank you so much I hope you come back again yeah anytime <laughs> and that's a wrap thank you very much for watching please subscribe and remember to invite your friends who are practitioners of pr marketing or anyone who wants to join their marketing and communication practice. Have a good day and all the best and God bless.